Okay. Right, we've got to our penultimate speaker. I don't, I don't think that it's loud enough out there. Can we have one massive cheer for Minister for Justice, Hamza Yusuf. Glasgow, let's hear you! All right, all right, we have a crowd in the house. All right. Listen, uh, I know you're all here to hear Nicola, all right? You don't really want to hear what I've got to say. Don't worry about it. I used to be transport minister. I know what it's like to be unpopular, okay? So I won't take up too much of your time, but just a few remarks from me. Honestly, standing here as a Glasgow boy in George Square, where we have tens of thousands of people, what a beautiful sight you all are. You're gorgeous. And you all want to know what I see when I stand here. I see people of all colours. I see the black standing next to the white, standing next to the brown. I see men and women. I see people of many nationalities. I see the gay and the straight. I see the religious and the agnostic. And that is what our movement is about. It's an inclusive movement. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, this is your country. Whether you're from Poland or Pakistan, whether you're from Germany or Ghana, whether you're 10 generations Scottish or you're a Syrian refugee, this is your independence that we are fighting for. An independent Scotland will be a rainbow nation. And my God, we're in Glasgow. Glasgow is a city where migrants have contributed so much. They've contributed to our business, to our academia, to our NHS, and even to our food. Thank God, this is the home of the chicken tikka masala. Ah, oh, damn right it is. And look to the serious point. That was all serious, but to the even more serious point. We're standing here in George Square. And this square is so symbolic we're having this rally here. Because you stand on the shoulders of some giants. Because this square, in many times in Glasgow's history, has shown the very best of Scotland when we have seen the very worst of the United Kingdom. In 1993, the great and late Nelson Mandela was here in George Square thanking the tens and thousands of Glaswegians that gave him the freedom of the city in 1981 when the UK Thatcher government called him a terrorist. We gave him the freedom of this great, great city. A few years ago, when David Cameron, remember that guy, when David Cameron shunned and turned his back on Syrian refugees. Thousands of us gathered in this square and we said loudly and we said clearly, you are welcome here. And we were the first city to welcome refugees in the entire United Kingdom. And just a matter of weeks ago, in this square, thousands of young people took off from school and they stood up for their rights and said to us, the old Jews, leave us a better planet, leave us a sustainable planet, leave us a brighter future. And the pro-independence parties, we said, go on yourself, while the UK government tried to give them detention. You can't give detention. You can't detain our young people, their hopes and their dreams. So ladies and gentlemen, you stand in George Square, writing and about to write the most important chapter in our nation's history. And you do it on the shoulders of some giants.
And you stand here today, and I'll finish on this, because the main act is next. I finish with this. You stand here in defiance. You stand in defiance of a United Kingdom arrogant Tory government that tells you Scotland cannot have its voice. Will you listen to the tens and thousands of here? We will not just have our voice, we will choose our own path, and that path will be to reclaim our own independence once again. And we stand here to tell that UK government, we reject what the UK government has become. We reject your rape clause. We reject your bedroom tax. We reject and to hell with your nuclear trident missiles. And I end on this, I ask you one favour and indulge me for just a second because we've got one hell of a campaign to fight for. And you're gonna have to, and I'm gonna have to, pound every pavement. We're gonna have to chat every door. We're gonna have to look in the whites of the eyes of every friend and colleague and neighbor that you come across to get them to vote for independence. But I want you to indulge me because it can seem hard and it can seem long and campaigns can seem arduous but I want you to indulge me. All the tens of thousands of you, do me a favour. I want you to close your eyes for a second. Just do it. All of you, close your eyes. And I want you to imagine polling day on Indiref 2020. You woke up that morning and that whole day you spent at a polling station. You spent chapping the doors. You spent talking to people. And it's night time, the polls are closed, it's the early hours of the morning. And you're in front of your television, it's at home, you're by yourself. Or maybe you're with your friends and your family. Or maybe you're one of the lucky ones that got to the count. And you're watching the television screen. And the result is announced that Scotland has voted to become an independent country. And that feeling that you have where the hairs are standing on the back of your neck and are standing up in your arms from this day to that day. I want you to remember that feeling. I want you to work your socks off, not for me, not for yourself, but the future generations to come because an independent Scotland is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make it happen. Get that loud in. Hello. I'd like to introduce the leader of Glasgow Council, Susan Aitken. Hello, George Square. You're standing in the spiritual home of our great Yes movement. Welcome to Glasgow.
This great city in 2014 said a loud and clear yes to Scottish independence, to Scotland's future being in Scotland's hands. And next year in 2020, it will say yes again, even bigger and even louder. And it will be followed by cities and towns and villages right across Scotland saying yes, saying yes to Scotland's future being in our own control Yes to Scots being able to decide their own destiny and breaking free from the chaos of Westminster that's holding us back. Glasgow led the way and the rest of Scotland will follow in IndyRef 2020. It is the absolute privilege of my life every single day to be able to lead this great city. And it is an absolute honour now to be able to introduce our star speaker for today. <laughs> I call her the boss. You know her as our absolutely wonderful First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. beautiful sight to behold here today. Firstly, let's hear it again for the leader of Glasgow City Council, the woman who delivered equal pay justice to women across this city. We are gathered here today in our thousands in the beautiful civic square of Scotland's biggest city. And we are gathered here for one simple purpose. And that purpose is to demand the right to choose a better future for our country. We are gathered here to demand the right to choose an independent future for Scotland. My friends, make no mistake, the general election that we face now on December the 12th is the most important election for Scotland in our lifetimes. The future of our country is on the line. And there is no doubt whatsoever that Scotland stands at a crossroads moment. Down one path is a future that will be dictated to us by the likes of Boris Johnson. A future where tax cuts for the wealthiest take priority over our people and our public services, that is not the Scotland that we want. Down that road is a future where Scotland is ripped out of our European family of nations against our will. A future where the UK turns in on itself. A future of a hostile environment for migrants. That is not the Scotland that we want. There are people here today from every corner of our country, but I want you to give me a shout right now if you are a new Scot. If you come to this country from elsewhere in Europe or across the world, give me a shout. The message to you today is that you are welcome here. The Scotland we seek is open, welcoming, diverse and inclusive, and no Tory is ever going to be allowed to change that. And down that 
Boris Johnson path lies a future where Boris Johnson has his strings pulled by Donald Trump. Make no mistake, if we accept for our country that future, our national health service, workers' rights, environmental standards, all of that is on the line. That is not the Scotland that we want. There is, my friends, a much better alternative. And that alternative is not a UK Labour government that can't even make up its mind where it stands on the question of Brexit. The days, the days when Scotland has to make do with a choice of the lesser of two evils, these days must come to an end. And if you permit me, if you permit me, given that I've been speaking about Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn to go off at a bit of a tangent, let me send a message to both of them. Why are you so scared to have real debates in this election? And my message and my challenge is this. I'll debate either of you, I will debate both of you, any time, any place. So stop running scared and come and justify why Scotland should not be independent. My friends, the better alternative, the much better alternative for our country is to take our future into our hands and to become an independent country. A country that invests in our people, that invests in our public services, that invests in living, lifting children out of poverty, not in a hard Brexit, not in trident weapons of mass destruction on the River Clyde. An independent country that is open, that is welcoming, that is diverse, that can build a better future, not just for us here, today and this generation of Scots, but a better future for all the generations who come after us. That, my friends, is the prize. And that prize is within our touching distance. But we must, we must seize that prize. I said a moment ago that this general election is the most important in our lifetimes. And that, that is the case. We must come out in our numbers and vote in this election. Vote to escape the chaos and the misery and the division of Brexit and vote to put Scotland's future into Scotland's hands. That's the message that must ring out across our country. So my ask, my ask of you, as I prepare to lead you to an independence referendum next year. My ask of you is this one. It is so wonderful to see all of you here today. This sight gladdens my heart. But over these next few weeks, I know the nights are drawing in. I know the weather is getting colder and wetter. I know minds are turning to the Christmas festivities. But all of us must make sure that over these next few weeks, we persuade everyone we know, our family, our friends, our neighbours, our workmates, to come out on December the 12th and send the biggest, loudest, most resounding message to Westminster that it is time for Scotland to choose our own future it is time for Scotland to be an independent country. An independent country that will be the best of friends and family with our friends and neighbours across the British Isles, across Europe and across the world. That, my friends, is the Scotland we seek. So let us go out there and grab it with both hands. Let us inspire people. 
with the positive message of everything an independent Scotland can be and everything the people of Scotland have it within themselves to achieve. You know, we're standing here in George Square, or Freedom Square as some have taken to calling it. This, this city that I am so proud to call my home. In 2014, this city voted yes. But next year, our challenge, our opportunity, is not just to make sure that this city votes, votes yes in even bigger numbers. Our challenge and our opportunity is to make sure that every part of Scotland votes yes to independence. And when that happens, fueled by your energy and your passion, and let me just before I finish tell you that your energy and your passion fuels me every single day and I am so grateful to each and every one of you for that. But when that happens, when our country, north, south, east, west, votes yes to independence, then together we can get on with the job that it is all about, of building that better, more prosperous, fairer, more equal, more outward looking, more open, more inclusive, more diverse Scotland that all of us believe in our hearts is possible. Let's win our independence. Let's win the Scotland we want to see. Thank you very much.